try to tell me down, but it'll never work I tell them to stay focused and not fold in Keeping my ground in this living world I tell them to stay focused, I'm not folding Got no problem, yeah, my God got it, yeah My God got me, yeah, so stay focused Keeping my eyes to the risen one I tell them to stay focused Although as we gather today, two or three in your night Reassure us you stay with us, no you never gon' change Recalibrate our intentions and refocus our heart As we enter in your presence, we reflect who you are In you my strength is renewed, that's why I choose to obey And in all my ways I acknowledge you for the rest of my day Shift our perspective to seek your peace above everything else I put my faith inside your power, Lord, and not in myself Lord, you're my refuge, you're my shelter, you're my shield and protector It don't matter if they hate us, if the world don't accept us Lord, you're so righteous and just, you correct us and love us you sustain me, Lord, you train me Let your peace rain down on Yo. You could try to tear me down, but it'll never work I tell them I stay focused, I'm not folding Keeping my ground in this living world I tell them I stay focused, I'm not folding Got no problem, yeah, my God got it, yeah My God got me, yeah, I stay focused Keeping my eyes to the risen one I tell them I stay focused, I'm not folding to our worship service today. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. He is here, hallelujah. He is here, amen. Could you please stand to, for the call to worship if you're able? 
Unto you, O God, we lift our praise. This is a marvelous seek to walk in your path. This day gives us the chance to honor you. Share with others your never-ending love. Our opening hymn, praise him, praise him, Jesus. as we prepare our hearts and minds for opening prayer. Sovereign God, we come this morning just to say thank you for the gift that you have given us today, the gift of gathering together in your name here at Westchester United Methodist Church. We give your name praise, we give your name honor, we give your name glory. Why? Because it's worthy to be praised. We pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit would dwell in and among us from breast to breast this day and touch the hearts and the lives of those that are gathered here. Grant us 
<clears throat> your grace grant us your peace. We say thank you. All praise and honor be to your name, Jesus. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. The Lord's Prayer. <laughs> we talk about happiness. Now, when we sing, we always end with a word. So not always, but most times, we end with a word. That means we agree with other things that is going on. And when people in the congregation hear the pastor preaches, they say that word. Anybody know what that word is? And we sing it sometimes. And we agree, wonder what that word means by we agree. I'm not going to even give you a hint. When we agree, we say that word. All right, when the pastor preaches, and when people sing, and when people are happy and they rejoice, they shout out a word. It begins with A. Amen. Amen. Right, we say amen. Amens mean I agree. I agree with what you are doing. 
I agree with what you just said. So the pastor preaches and you hear people say, amen, because they agree. And when they finish singing a song and they feel good and they feel joyful, you hear the people say, amen. amen. What do you say? Amen. All right. And we have a song that we used to sing in Sunday school. And we say when we are happy, we say that word. Right? What is the word again? Amen. Amen. What is the word? Amen. I don't hear you. Come on. Amen. That's right. When we sing that, we said, Amen. So when we are happy, we sing that word. Right? And then we give two beats. Bam, bam. Down, down. Amen. Say amen. 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 Again? Amen. All right. So if we are happy, and we know that we are happy, we say, Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. That's right. Remember when we come to church, you know, we are joyful and we are happy. And that is the reason, one of the reasons why we come to church, because we want to be happy. Yes? And cheerful. We don't come to, you don't come to Westchester and be bored. Hello? Amen. That's right. You do not come to Westchester and be bored. Right? So we shout and we sing and we dance and we shout amen. Yes? All right. So the song says, if you're happy and you know we say, yeah. that's right. Come on. If you're happy and you know we say, yeah. all right. I can't hear you. You have to help them. All right. If you're happy and you know we say, amen. amen. If you're happy and you know we say, And whatever happens in their life that makes them sad, they can just sing the 
song and said, be a happy. Lord, help me to be happy. Amen? Amen. Now you have your seat. Right. If you're happy and you know to say amen. Play for us this morning. Yes? yes? All right. Give them a round of applause, everybody. <laughs> Remember, we are happy. Yes? Okay. All right.
Thank you, Rising Star, for your ministry in music. A special good morning to you, my brothers and sisters in the sanctuary. And for those of you who are worshiping with us this morning by social media, I said good morning to you also and thank you for letting us in your home. This particular segment in our worship service, which is known as our Respond to God Generosity, is a very important part. It's an opportunity for you and I to, to acknowledge God's presence and what he has done for us in our daily lives. And as usual, you know the routine, the basket at the back, and the front is for our tithe and offering to cover expenses for our apportionment. And that, of course, is every first, second, and third uh, Sunday, along with the scholarship fund. And every fourth and fifth Sunday, the van ministry we contribute to. So I ask all of you to give generously as usual. And for those of you who are worshiping with us, you also can contribute to westchestermethodist.com. Let us go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, you have been our source of strength, our source of guidance, and our source of direction. Oh, Heavenly Father, this morning we come giving you the honor and praise and glory because you are so wonderful. Thank you for your presence this morning in our worship service. And this morning we commit our tithes and offerings for you this morning and ask that you bless them. Use them that your work on earth will continue. And we ask it in the precious name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is taken from Philippians chapter 3, reading from verse 8 to 14, and that is Philippians chapter 3, reading from verse 8 to 14. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having a righteous of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his suffering by becoming like him in his death. If someone I may attain the resurrection from the dead, now that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make my own, but Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it 
my own. But this is one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the price of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus, the word of God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel lesson. And this is found in St. Matthew chapter 14, reading from verse 22 to 33. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Here ends the reading of the Gospel lesson assigned for today. We will now be blessed with uh, the music ministry from Sister Tara Mulholland. Blessed good morning, everyone. Good morning. I wasn't aware that I was supposed to sing a solo this morning, so I wasn't really prepared to. But if Jesus say yes, how can I say no? Yes. Shackle by your head the burden a load of guilt and shame then the hand of Jesus touched me and now I am no longer the same he touched me Oh, he touched me, and oh, the joys that bless my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and me. Since I met the blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never 
mercies to praise Him. I'll shout it while eternal He touched me, oh, he touched me, and oh, the joys that floods my soul, something happened, and oh, I Something happened, and oh, I know he touched me and made me whole. me and made me whole. How much, how many of you feel the touch of God this morning? I know I do. Every time I open up my eyes, I know that God is with me. What a, what a great feeling. What a great feeling to know that we serve a God that is so grateful and so gracious and so not selfish that he woke us up this morning. I want to thank Reverend Gordon for allowing me to share his space this morning. It is always great when we know that we can be able to share God's word with God's people. That's what we are supposed to do. We are called to be disciples of Christ. We cannot be disciples of Christ if we save the word for ourselves. We have to share it with others. Scripture was read from Philippians. I would just like to read the last two chapter, uh, last two verses from the book of Philippians. Actually, three. 12 to 14. Not that I've already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus had made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. As you see, the title is, Stay Focused. Stay Focused on the Prize. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for bringing us here this morning. Father, I ask that you use me this morning to bring your word to your people. 
I pray, Father, that the words that come out of my mouth would be acceptable for you and about you. And I pray, Father, that we will not leave here the same way we came in this morning. And I pray, ask all of these prayers, Father, in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. As we see in our world today, everyone is pressing forward for a goal, whether it's in school, uh, in sports, uh, you know, running, track, doing everything, right? We are pressing on for the goal. And sometimes we work so hard to make it to that goal because we know at the end the prize is winning either a medal, a degree, or uh, some kind of, uh, what is it, like the awards. And the awards, right, the trophy, right? So we are there pushing forward to win. Sometimes we exhaust ourselves trying to reach that goal. So as I'm preparing for this message today and I think about the goal that we are pressing forward for, I ask myself, why is it that we do not give that same energy to become better Christian? Man can give us what God can give us. But we are pressing so hard to reach that other goal. How about going to church this morning? Oh, I'm too tired. How about sharing God's word? Oh, you know, I've been so busy. I don't have time to do that. But you wake up Sunday morning. Why it's so interesting for the marathon? Why is it that it's kept on Sunday morning? And everyone is up early in the morning ready to run that race to get that prize. Where is Jesus in that? See the story of Paul in, in what Paul was talking about here is that we all know that Paul had a Damascus Demarcus experience, but he prosecuted Christians. He was not the greatest guy. He was not the best, but God used him. That today, we are learning and being taught by the word of Paul. So if Paul can be so great, why can't we be the same? We allow people that are ungodly to tell us our mistakes is not, we're not going to be able to do anything better than what our mistakes were, our past. But Paul is saying, I'm pressing forward. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I'm the greatest, but I'm not looking backwards. And that's how we have to look forward and press on. But we often want to get caught up in the wrong crowds. Mixed up. Don't know which way to go. We come to church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We meet our friends in the corner and we forgot all about what we was praising in church. We can't allow our focus to be deterred. God is not saying, you know what, all right, you can have your moment. He wants us to continue to stay focused on that prize. And that prize is moving to us heavenward, as the Bible said. We all know what heavenward is, right? Where is that? We don't know? What is it that at the end of this life we want to have? We want to be in that room that was prepared for us, correct? Yes. How can we make it to that room if we do not continue to walk the walk with Christ? I know we live in a world that is upside down. 
all over the place. We can get easy get caught up in the mishaps of today. But we can't lose our focus. Because at the end of the day, the only person who can get us to that place is Jesus Christ. Not our friend Mary Sue or John Doe or they can't get us into heaven. So if they're not leading us the right path, then we need, to, we need some new friends. And too often we don't want to give up friends that we had for 30, 40, 50 years because we know them. But if that friend is going this way and you're going this way, something has to give. We have to let go. I know sometimes it's hard to let go. It's hard. But if we are going in the wrong direction, it's time to say, I love you, but I'm going this way. Our world is too confused today that we want to follow everything that is not of Christ, but we have to stay focused on that prize. That trophy is not going to get us into heaven. That degree is not going to get us into heaven. That award is not going to get us into heaven. Because if we don't have Christ, we don't have nothing. Can I say that again? If we don't have Christ, we have nothing. Stop pretending we know who Jesus is when we are living like the devil. Every Sunday, we hear our pastors and preachers preach about love, preach about loving one another, being good to one another, doing things we're supposed to do in the walk of Christ. If I ask you what pastor preached about last Sunday, how many can tell me? It was about food, right? It was about feeding, right? Right? Right, bro? How about two weeks ago? When the minister preached, what she talked about? Comfort zone. Hello? We have to keep the word with us. We can't just have it on Sunday morning from 10 to 12 and forget what it is. Because we are being watched. When we said, I'm a Christian, guess what? Now all eyes are like this. Everyone is watching. If you barely drop something, someone is watching. Don't make the mistake and say, ooh. Say that. Someone said, I thought you was a Christian. So everyone is watching all the time. So we always have to be on our game. We are being watched. Now, we are not perfect, and we have to always remind people we are not perfect. But as Paul said, I'm not perfect, but I'm not looking backwards. I'm pressing forward. So I'm going to be a better me, and I'm going to keep striving to be a better me. That's all Christ is asking us to do, to be better people. That's it. It's not difficult. The same energy we can give to be devious, the same energy we can give to be good. Right? It takes more energy to be good than to be evil. Why I say that? When you're doing good, you're happy. When you're doing evil, you're miserable. Now you're looking for the next evil moment. But when we have Christ with us and we pray, it changes everything. Just a few weeks ago, I was in a situation where I, I wanted to be the world. I just wanted to turn back into the world. But I know who I was serving, and I had to stay the course. I had to breathe, I had to pray, and I had to ask the Lord to please take this away from me. 
I want to tell you, within minutes, I felt the Lord, that my whole attitude towards that situation change because I gave it to God. We have to give our problems to God and he will clear the path for us. When we take it on, we only become more miserable. We have to let it go and allow God to take control. Remember Romans 12.2 says, do not be confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yes, we live in this world, but we do not have to conform to what is going on. I'm hearing all the churches right now losing people left and right. People are going. I actually was reading something the other day and when some guy told um, the pastor, what are you preaching about that Jesus for? That's old news. And the pastor's so concerned. It's not that way no more. That's not Jesus teaching anymore. If you notice a lot today, our Bible, the Bible is being transformed into this is how I want it to be. And we are seeing how many people, even who have been Christians for years, are now falling in to that, that pattern. We can't say God was the same today, yesterday, and forever. But yet we want to change God's work. Young people today, I know when you go to college and, you know, you're going to have all this distraction. But when you know about Christ, don't let anyone tell you anything different. It's okay to want to enjoy life, but do it responsible, in a responsible way. It's not because Johnny's doing it. And it's not right. You should be a part because you want to be a part of the crowd. We are losing our children too fast to this because they're losing sight of the goal. Parents, grandparents, we have to remind our kids the prize and to stay focused on that prize. It's not about the glamour. It's not about seeing someone getting away with something. Guess what? Someone may be getting away with something right now, but trust and believe that time will come. I know people use the word karma, but God is saying, oh, my, when my time comes, it will happen. We have to press forward and stay focused on the prize. I don't know about anyone else, but I want that prize. Because the day I'm to exit this world, I want to know that I will be seated in God's kingdom. That's my focus. That's where I'm going. I'm not going to be deterred. I'm not going to allow anyone to tell me anything different. Right now, I'm going to tell you, I could count on the friends I got on my hand. That's how many. Why? because we see things differently. I'm not going to allow you to turn me away from the word of God. We have to press on to the prize. How many ways can I say this? Let us not lose sight of who God is. Just over the weekend, last few days, we see how an entire island was pretty much wiped out. Just that quick. We don't have time to say, oh, but well, I'm gonna get better tomorrow. We don't have that time. We don't have the time. So we can't say, well, as soon as I get myself right, I'm gonna become a good Christian. Someone said that to me. Nah, I'm not ready yet. 
God is not ready for me yet. We don't have time. Start now and let God clean us up. God don't use only his saints. Was Paul a saint? Was Moses a saint? Was David a saint? But we talk about them today. So we don't need to wait till we are good to become good followers of Christ. Today is the day to start following Christ and giving God all the glory. Press on. Stay focused. Stay the course. When you're feeling weary, I know we all do, every once in a while, when we're like, Lord, I can't do it no more, I can't take it no more, don't give up. Don't give up. Because God is there. He's saying, don't give up. I'm here with you. Remember, we cannot get to, the, to God, as Jesus said in John 4, 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we have to make sure that we always remind ourselves that our relationship with Christ is the best relationship we can have. It's one that he said, I would never leave you or forsake you. When our friends leave, Jesus stays. When our friends lose trust in us, Jesus is still with us. When our friends decide to turn their back and don't want anything else to do with us, Jesus is still with us. Never be so eager for a friendship that you're unhappy with, but be happy and eager to be with a friend who is always going to be with you. What a friend we have in Jesus. What better friend we want to have in our lifetime. So I say it again to my brothers and sisters and to our children who are preparing to go back to school and to college, don't lose sight of your prize. Yes, your goal is to get that degree, but your biggest prize is to stay focused with Jesus and that degree and everything else will fall into place. Jesus will make a way, even when there's no way. But we have to stay focused on the prize. I wanted to, uh, a song that I, I, <laughs> I know I gave it to, um, I gave it to Brother Gomes a little bit too late. And it's a song they call Jireh. And the meaning of Jireh is provider. And in that song, if you get an opportunity to listen to it, it's by uh, Maverick City, Elevation Wor Worship. And that song, it, every time I listen to it, it really gives me a lot of strength because it reminded me that who my provider is. And the song is, is, is saying, provider, you are, all, you are enough. You are enough, more than enough, forever enough. We are enough. God is enough. If we don't have what others have, if our neighbors have it all, that doesn't mean they're happy. But when we have God, we are billionaire. That billionaire that people won the other day, guess what? It is nothing compared to the billionaire of having Christ Jesus as your savior. Amen? Because you can't take that with you. You cannot take it with you. And it's not gonna make you any happier than what you are. It's just gonna make you more miserable because now you gotta watch your back. Who's coming at me? Made bad investments because everyone now is gonna tell you everything in the world and before you know it, half of it is gone. But, when you have Jesus, ain't nothing no one can do about that. 
I really wish I had that song for you today. Um, I mean, I think I can bring it up. I'm not sure how it would play on. But I just don't want it, I wanted to just really um, remember to stay focused on that prize of becoming heavenward. Go into, go to us heavenward. Remember Paul's teaching. Remember where Paul came from. Remember he never went back. He stayed focused and he, was, he wanted to do everything pleasing in God's eye. And today we talk about him, that he became a martyr in the end, but he died. He died preaching and teaching about God. And that's what God the Bible tells us. As Christians, we may lose our lives for Christ, but we know that we will be with him in the end. That's one of the things I don't like about these commercials and this stuff. It's so commercial in these things sometimes, like play the music.
So we believe and trust that God is all that you need. And you will like prayer. Please, you can come forward and we'll pray for you. Remember that God is everything. We are enough. If you would like prayer, Dear Father, as we come here to this altar today, some of us may have heavy hearts. There may be may some illnesses that some of us may be dealing with with ourselves, our loved one. But we know, Father, that you are a provider, a healer. That whatever it is that is going on with us right now, dear Lord, we are asking that you touch each and every one here at this altar and everyone in their, their pews. As they, remind, as they are reminded, Father, that you are enough. That's all they need is you, just to lean on you. That whatever is going on, you can handle it. Anything with you, dear Lord, we know you said the battle is not ours, it's yours. So we are asking, Father, that So sorry. We ask in there, Lord, that you touch, you touch us, touch us all. That whatever is going on, we're going to leave it at this altar. That we are not going to take it back. Because if we take it back, we are only adding more to what is going on already. You are a big God. You can handle anything. You can take on anything that we give, give to you. We just have to know that you can handle it all and stop taking it back. Too often we come, we drop stuff off, and we pick it back up, and we want to know why we are still in the same situation that we are in. That's because we want to take it back. So I'm saying to you, each and every one here today, whatever you have that is not of God, Whatever it is that you have that you cannot control, leave it here at this altar. Tomorrow brings its own problems. You don't need to take today's problem into tomorrow. So just leave it here at this altar, and God will take care of it. God said, I will never give you more than you can handle. More, I, cannot, I will not give you more than you can handle. You handle what you can, and you leave the rest to me. I will take it. I will handle it. Whatever situation that is going on with our friends, our loved ones, our jobs, put it in God's hand and just smile and say, you know what? I know a God that can take anything on. Why do I need to waste time with you when my God already told me it's already done and taken care of? So I say, brothers and sisters today, as you go through this week and these days, just remember that we have a God that you, you serve a God that is a great God, that anything that you have that you cannot handle, just pass it back on to him and he will take care of it. So I ask, Father, that you cover each and every one here at this altar and in the pews, that when they walk out of here, they are shielded by your blood, and no enemy 
no weapon form shall prosper. Amen, amen, amen. Did you hear the last word that was just said? Amen. Amen. What was it? Amen. Amen. That means you, you agree. You agree. You agree. All right. We just want to thank uh, Sister Singleton for her message this morning. Stay focused. And uh, I just want to express this uh, 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 with the children who are, say, youth who are going back to school. They are going back to school. Jamal is already gone to school, back to college, and we just ask God to cover him wherever he is today. And you know, he's going to have uh, new friends and new surroundings and new topics to study. So we want God to just guide him so that he doesn't get off focus. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, Makeda, when you leaving? Makeda. Tuesday? All right. She's going Tuesday to college. And she's going to meet new friends too. And new things to study. So we ask God to just go with her. Amen? All right. Now, um, go, anybody else going away? No, oh, no, I'm going back to school again. Well, I'm so happy that you have been you, you have been here last week and you are here this week and you're going back when? Tomorrow. tomorrow. Right, that's imminent. So she's going right back tomorrow. As, listen, remember when you get up in the mornings, just pray. Amen? Always. And you get something new and you do not understand it to say, Lord, this one is yours. <laughs> this one is yours. Just guide me through it. Amen? Okay. Oh, Jay, Sean is going away when? Tomorrow, too. Anybody else going away now, going away this week? Uh, oh, she's gone back to school already. Jamie has gone back to school already. So, all right, come, Michaela. And Numble, anybody else here going away? And if you want to represent your child who is going away, you may come forward. All right. Yes, I want you to kneel down because your knees are young. <laughs> you can't go down there. <laughs> Our two sisters are going to college, and this is the first time. Mm. And when it's first, they call them freshmen, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to be fresh. <laughs> but you're going with not only freshness, but you're going with God, someone that you already know. Yes? Mm -hmm. Father God, we ask you to stretch out your hand over these two young people who are going away to study. We ask you, oh God, to just touch them. Let them understand that although they are away, they are going to take God with them, take their home training with them, take their church training with them, and let others see that they are a bit different not different in color, but different in behavior. We ask you, O oh God, to just be with their families so that they do not worry too much, that they constantly pray for them and bless them and whatever they need, let them ask you for it and not to ask strangers. Because, O oh God, the devil is out there waiting, waiting, waiting to keep them off 
focus. So we ask you, O oh God, to just cover them wherever they go, cover their work, cover whatever they are going to do, help them to understand new things, and just be blessed. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Go with God. Go with God. Go with God. All right, I have something a little bit different this morning. I'm going to ask you to stand and name somebody you haven't seen in the longest while in church. Somebody you haven't seen in the longest while in church. I thank God that you are here, but what about the others who haven't been here for some time? Name them. I can name one. Sister Blessed. Sister Blessed hasn't been here, but I've spoken to her several times. So, please give her a call. Give her a call. Anybody else who hasn't been here for some time? Who? Oh, Sister Jennifer Onomo. Give her a call. Please. If she doesn't answer, leave a message. Leave messages on the phone. Let her know that we are concerned about them and we miss them dearly. Is there anybody else? No? We thank you all for worshiping with us this morning and we thank those who uh, um, had something to do with this service this morning, whether they are ushering or the pan players or the ministers this morning or the tech people or the musicians or the everybody else. We just want to thank you for your service in this place. Amen? Amen. And so we are going to stand and sing. The, no, before we do that, we have in the bulletin one big thing. You know what that is? The flea market. The flea market is this Saturday coming. And we need helpers. So who are the helpers going to come this Saturday? No, I would like you to come tomorrow and help us to sort the things out and label them. Yes, we're going to have things to give away and things to sell. So we're going to need helpers. Amen? We, we, you know, we, we, we're going to need... Sister Denise, I know you're working, but you can't come Saturday. Right, to help us on the table and bring somebody else. <laughs> yes, who can come Saturday to help us? Sister Sandra, what about you? Tomorrow or Saturday? Huh? What time? 11 o'clock tomorrow. 11 o'clock can't come to 11 o'clock. So somebody else can come 11 o'clock tomorrow to help us, yes? All right, there's Sister Gibbs, eh, Gibson. Who again? All right, all right. Thank you for coming. Yes. Young people, yeah. Tomorrow? All right, come on. We oh, thank God. We have some hands there. What about young people who can come tomorrow? If you're not working, come tomorrow. Yes. Okay. What about you, Hezekiah? Can you come tomorrow? Then why you didn't put your hand up? Put your hand up. Let everybody see your hand. That's right. Okay, don't let me have to name anybody else, you know. You know I can't name you. All right, so come people, we need helpers. And also, if you have hangers, bring them tomorrow. These are cheap, so bring them. Bring them tomorrow, as we're going to need hangers so that we can hang the clothing up, okay? Um, anybody else, anything else I'm leaving out? Birthdays. All right. And we need to pray for, we have a long list here of people to pray for. Yes? Um, the first person we have here is uh, Sister Lucinda Hodges-Taylor. She's here, the here, Hodges, so you know she's related to me. She's in her 90s. And be careful, people, because we are long livers. <laughs> we are long livers. Because my aunt who died the other day was 102. And we have another one who is 96. And Aunt Lou is 92. So, 
and she's not feeling very well. So I ask you to pray for her. Simonetta Drew and family, Sister Phyllis Watson, Sister Gladys Thompson, Brother Delbert Singleton, he's right there, but we're still praying for him, yes? York Wilson, Marie Cannon family, Brother Emmanuel Cannon family, Shirley Cheeming and family, Elizabeth Amanka. So although they are in church, they need prayers. Sister Navlet Tennant and family, Sister Esther Holder, all she's doing is, is Sister Debbie here this morning? No? Okay. And the Shaw family, Sister Shaw is right here. And there, Dennis. And Dwayne Williams, is Sister Williams here? And Francine Brown and family, and Sister Eldra Petros. And all the others that we haven't seen for some time, Let's keep her prayer so And also remember the pastor. Okay. Anybody else? That's right. Okay. Anybody else in the house who hasn't been here for some time? Okay. Anybody from another church? Yes? Who is from another church? Somebody from a person. They don't want to show their hand or stand up, you know. I see you. Please stand. <laughs> no? Well, I thank you for coming. Yes, I know you're here. Thank you for coming. I do not know if I should say you are from Epworth or you are from the conference. Epworth. Epworth. <laughs> Epworth, all right. <laughs> we thank you very much for coming. All right, so we want you to have a blessed day. Please stand and we'll sing uh, the Trust and Obey. We'll have the benediction from the back. Please stand, trust, and obey.
Brothers and sisters, as we leave this place today, remember to stay focused on the prize. Let us press on as we go forth and, become, and continue to be disciples for Christ. Amen. 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 Let's go in peace, everybody. And have a blessed week.